Step number three, we're going to go to our balance sheet. Again, our labels are all put in, so we're going to be filling in numbers. So our first section is going to be our asset section of our balance sheet. Of the statement, so we're only doing third column um, for our vertical analysis. Okay, so our assets, we're going to be looking at our adjusted trial balance from the 4-1 work together to um, get these numbers. So our cash balance is 36,460.79. Petty cash is 300. Oops. Accounts receivable is 23,018.95. Then we need to look at our allowance for uncollectibles. 21 or 2101.23 we're going to subtract those two numbers to get 20,917.72 merchandise inventory for kitchen 147,084.62. Merchandise inventory for bath, 97,671.31. Supplies, 1,950. Prepaid insurance, 2,500. We're going to add those together to get our total current assets. We should get $306,884.44. Okay, next we're going to put in our plant assets. Again, we're going to get this information off our adjusted trial balance. So office equipment is going to be $26,015.89. Sorry. Um, less our accumulated depreciation um, for office equipment, which is going to be 18674 We're going to subtract those two then. Okay, so we should get $7,341.89. Then we're going to do our store equipment. Fifty-one thousand eight hundred fifty-two point eight two. Accumulated depreciation for store equipment is thirty-six thousand two hundred fifty-five. Subtract those two. And we get fifteen thousand five hundred ninety-seven point eight two. To get our total plant assets, we'll add those two together. And we get 22,939.71. To get our total assets then, we will add our plant assets and our current assets. For a total of 329,824.15. Okay, that was our asset section. Now we'll move down to our liabilities. Our liabilities, we're also going to get off of our adjusted trial balance from 4-1. So we're going to start with our accounts pay payable, 24,116.31. Employee income tax federal, 4,925.59. Employee income, oops, I missed one. This 
point. That was right. Sorry. That was sales tax. Now I need to do my employee income tax. Sorry about that. 1,335.44. States unemployment is 956.99. Social security, 2,376.90. Medicare tax, 553.24. Medical insurance, 846.42. Retirement plan, 571.94. Unemployment tax federal, 16.72. Unemployment tax state, 112.08. And federal income tax is 2,749.15. And dividends payable is 4,000. Okay, we will add all of those liabilities together. Okay, our total liability should be 42,560.78. Okay, then we need to fill in our, or our stockholders' equity section. So that's going to come off of that statement of stockholders' equity that we just um, completed. So our capital stock is going to be 75,000. Our retained earnings. or $212,263.37. And we added those two together to get our total stockholders equity, which was 287, 263.37. And then to figure out our total liabilities and stockholders equity, we'll take those two and add them together. Again. Sorry about that. And we get, oops, $329,824.15. So we want to make sure that what we get here equals what we get for our total assets. Those are equal, so that tells us that we should be right. Okay, last thing that we need to do for step three then is the vertical analysis. Um, so notice it says percentage of assets. So assets is always going to be our bottom number. So here we're going to take our total current assets divided by our total assets. We get 93.0. Okay, we'll take total plant assets. <laughs> okay, I think my reminders are done for a while. <laughs> Divided by our total assets. Okay, we get um, that one will round up, so we'll get 7.0%. And here we'll take total assets divided by total assets, so we'll get 100.0. Here, we're going to take our liabilities divided by our total assets. We should get 12.9%. We'll take stockholders' equity divided by total assets, 87.1%.
And here we'll take the total liabilities and stockholders equity divided by total assets. Those are the same number. So we'll simply get 100.0 again. Okay, that was the end of step three. So go to the next video for step four.